So here we've got a very young calf, a dairy calf, and because it's very young, we're going to see that the rumen isn't developed like what we see in the adult. Remember in the adult animal, the rumen is going to occupy pretty much all of this left side of the abdomen. Okay? But here we see, here's the spleen, and it's attached to the rumen. This little thing right here is the rumen. We can see the momentum attaching to the left longitudinal groove right there. Okay, so that's the rumen. And here, this little thing here is the reticulum. Okay, so these aren't developed because we're not fermenting food at this point. We're just drinking milk. Okay, and so all of this here, this here is our abomasum. Remember, the abomasum is the true stomach. So we're bypassing the four stomachs via the gastric groove and bringing that milk into the true stomach, the abomasum. Okay? So usually the abomasum is pretty much central, more onto the right side. And so remember, in the adult, you wouldn't expect to see intestines over here, but in the calf, you would. Okay, so we can see loops of jejunum here. We can see the spiral colon here, which is the modification of the ascending colon. And we can even see the cecum here. Okay. Ah, also, there's the kidney right there. Now we're going to flip back over to the other side. So now here we are on the right side of the calf. And some of this greater momentum has been reflected away a little bit. So it's not quite where it would be if we just opened up the animal. But we can see here the superficial leaf. Deep to that would be the deep leaf of the greater momentum. The space in between is the omental bursa. We see it here attaching along the greater curvature of the abomasum. And then it comes up here, and we see it attaching to the descending duodenum and mesoduodenum. Okay? You go back and look at the adult room in it. When we open up a left flank incision, we'd see that descending duodenum, mesoduodenum above, greater omentum below. Okay. Up here we can see the kidney. Okay, back down here we see that abomasum on its lesser curvature is going to be the lesser omentum. That's going to be coming up. And somewhere up in here is going to be covered the omasum. The omasum is quite small so we really can't identify it here but it's covered by this lesser omentum. Notice also in this calf the liver is quite large. The liver is going to extend beyond the caudal border of the ribs whereas in the adult it's much less part of the abdominal contents and it's totally covered by the diaphragm and the ribs. Okay, so here once again we can see the kidney up in here. You pull this back, pull our greater omentum back, we can see jejunum. We pull out this jejunum. Okay. So once again descending duodenum caudal duodenal flexure. We then have ascending duodenum up in here. It ascends up in here. It then becomes jejunum. Jejunum is going to coil along this way around. And here we see kind of a little bit 
elongation of that mesentery here. And this is the jejunal flange, okay? And that's a landmark for surgeons knowing that we're getting close to the ilium. So once again, here's the cecum, it's a blind sac, and the ilium is this portion here. We identify it because of the ileocecal fold right here, okay? And the ilium is going to then come into the junction of the cecum and the ascending colon, okay? So the ascending colon is very much modified in the ruminant, remember. It has a proximal loop and then it goes into the spiral colon and we have to flip it up this way to find that spiral colon once again. And so in that spiral colon we've got loops going inward which are the centripetal coils loops coming outward which are the centrifugal coils and then we'll have a distal loop before it becomes the transverse colon. Remember that transverse colon is always crossing cranial to the root of the mesentery and then we'll have the descending colon and that is the calf.